And in terms of a strategy, I would say spend the first 10 minutes looking for the abnormal films, as I said, then spend the next 15 minutes to confirm that the normals that you've left are normal and mark them as normal. Then flag every case that you're not sure about. There's a little flag button there in when you're doing the exam, as well as on our platform. Use the flag button and then ask yourself this question if you flagged it. That means I'm not sure if this is a fracture. Ask yourself the question, is this a textbook case? If your answer is no, then I suggest you put that as normal. Okay. Now, if you count only 15 abnormals, uh, I would spend time looking through the 15 normals to see if there are two or three f films that could be abnormal. But be, be, be very careful not to overcall. Okay. I would spend the last five minutes looking for mistakes like missing the side, site marker, mislabeling, that kind of stuff. In, for example, if it's a right side and you put left, you need to just make sure you've corrected that because if you get the wrong side on your text, what you've written down, you will not get any marks. And I would suggest you start using the system every time you practice. Now, the number one tool I say for uh, passing the rapids is simulation. So simulate practice and conditions that simulate the exam and practice trying to do those 30 cases in 25 minutes. Remember, each packet won't have more than 12 or 18 abnormals. Okay, so it's usually that kind of ratio. Um, I mean, Kalandri said experts were once amateurs who kept practicing. And I think those who have uh, done these packets again and again, we've had people getting 30 over 30, um, I would say relatively often because of the practice they do with packets that are just like the exam. And that's one thing that you really need to make sure that if you choose a rapid reporting resource, please make sure that they simulate the exam. And the ones that we've got have been you know, gone through many, many times to simulate what you get in the exam. So practice, do two to three rapids every day, the next, you know, 30, 30 days. Um, and then make checklists as you practice, because somehow when you start writing down checklists or typing it all out, it helps reinforce your memory. And then repeat 30 to 60 rapid reporting packets uh, a month before the exam. The hidden, the, the secret is in daily routine and doing it consistently every day will get you through all the packets and give you the chance to do it once or twice. The seven most common mistakes that people make is not having a plan, not having enough revision check resources like checklists, not, I would say not using, yeah, if it's coming later, not analyzing your weak areas and working on them. Um, and if you get areas that you overcall on frequently, you've got to make sure that um, you stop doing that. Um, you've got to practice as if it's an exam. That means you don't just do five cases and then go take a coffee. You sit down for 30 minutes, 25 minutes, finish the packet. Um, not using software that simulates the exam because that helps with timing, but it also gives you familiarity of the of the actual exam and. As far as I know, ours is um, one of the one of those that do that. There may be others, but make sure they simulate the exam. And of course, overcalling um, is a big issue. So there are some courses that are run um, where they give you very hard cases, which you don't get in the exam, and you end up becoming an overcaller. They are difficult cases, but it, remember that in the FRCR exam, it has to be what we call a Bondor case, a very typical case. There should be no ambiguity on whether this is normal or abnormal. And a good radiologist should be able to make the difference. Um, so we're now going to move into the longs, the long cases. And here, I think the, the, my top quote is, a bad system will beat a good person every time. So in the longs, the most common mistake people make is um, not mentioning the relevant negative findings, not listing differentials in order of, of, of likelihood, 
not limiting the number of differentials to around two or three and not including further appropriate investigation. So here, let's, uh, let's just look at some of the long cases. So let's um, go back to my, to the website. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the 2B session and I'm going to open the long cases. I'll um, show you where I am. Okay, so here we are in the long cases. We'll open the curated packets. I'm going to just open packet one, okay? Um, and while it's opening, what I'll do is I'll just uh, talk to you about the, the main thing. So first go through all the cases to spot the easy ones, okay? Um, and then uh, your aim is to finish as many of the easy cases as possible quickly. If there are any cross-sectional studies like CT or MR, look at them first and then scan through the modalities and sequences for clues or the diagnosis. Okay, so let's just go through the website now. So let's, again, let's start with the timer. You can, you've got the timer out there, it helps you. So for the first thing I would do, I would open this out. Okay, so you've got all the, all the sort of numbers there. Then I would go through all the cases to see what cases there are and see how many have very few images. And I would start with them. them. So first of all, I would start with case six, maybe do case four, then jump to, let's say, case two, case one, and then only do case uh, five, maybe, and then finally do this one, which is case three. And when you look at a case, don't start with the x-ray straight away. If you have uh, a case like this, look at the MR first, because um, when you look at the MR, you might see the diagnosis straight away, and then it might make it easier for you to then write that there is a sclerotic margin, okay? So that's my, top advice the way you do it um and then and that way you will you, you will make sure that you've at least written some notes for the easy cases make sure that you've timed yourself so you don't go over the top i think aiming for about 10 minutes per case and spending but spending only around seven to eight in the easy cases will help you so those that have just one uh, image or two images, try and finish them super fast so you have time to work on the other ones. Now, here's the things that will slow you down. One is searching for keyboard um, keyboard uh, shortcuts. So what I referred to there are these shortcuts. For example, if I pressed R on my keyboard, it op automatically opens R, I can do it. If I press W, I can window. If I press S, I can scroll, which I can't do in this case. And if I if I if I press E, it should go back to reset. So that's why they give you that little letter there. That's a letter to help you on the on the keyboard. Okay. Um, so uh, that's searching for keyboard shortcuts and practicing with keyboard shortcuts is important. Don't use long sentences. You just need to let the examiner know that you you have found it so use bullet points i'd suggest and um and i would suggest that you use a a good temp 